In this video, we'll be looking at how I set up the lighting, plumbing, and filter system. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thanks again for tuning in. In the previous video, I took you through how I built my DIY aquarium, both the acrylic fish tank as well as the base cabinet. That's the first part of my aquarium build series. If you haven't watched that, please go ahead and check it out. In this video, I'll be taking you through how I set up my aquarium lighting, plumbing and filter system. As usual, I will leave the links in the description for the equipments you see in this video. Hope you'll find it useful for your own project. First off, I'm widening the holes I had drilled earlier to secure the light tubes. When you purchase aquarium light tubes, they usually come with suction cups for mounting. But over time, these suction cups will lose their grip and the light tubes will fall into the water. I didn't want to go through the hassle of re-securing them when they do fall, so instead of using suction cups, I'm using cable ties to secure the lighting to the tank. Here I'm threading the cable tie through the hole, looping it round light tube, and securing the tie. This way, I don't need to worry about the lights falling into the water. And when I need to change the lights, I can simply remove and replace the cable ties with the new lighting. You can get a pack of 100 of these cable ties for about $3. Relatively inexpensive. Next up. It's time to do the water test for the aquarium to check for leaks. But before I start filling the tank, I placed a water pump in and connected it. So in case there was a leak, I won't be caught scrambling and can pump out the water and address the situation quickly. I've removed the bottom trim before filling the tank. This is to water test the bottom joints, especially the four corners. If there was going to be a leak, it would usually be at these corners. Thankfully, there were no leaks till this stage. So I pumped out the water, installed the bottom trim, and did the full water test. I closely monitored the filling process to check for any leaks. Thankfully, there were none. And finally, I placed the top trim and turn on the lights. This is how my aquarium looks filled with the lights on. And here are a few night shots. For my tank, the filter I chose to go with is a top filter, or more commonly known as a drip box filter. I had considered other types of filtration methods as well, each having their own pros and cons. 
I will be discussing this in more details in the next video, so be sure to tune in for that. So in a drip box filter, water is pumped from the tank to the top of the filter and expelled through a spray bar. The default number of containers for this set is 12. 4 clear and 8 darkened. I had purchased 2 extra layers of containers to increase the total amount of filter medias I can house. The four clear containers have drawers. These will contain the mechanical filtration and sits at the top level. The drawers facilitate easy removal for cleaning and maintenance. Then the water drips down into the next two levels of darkened containers. These will house the biological and chemical medias. I have two sets of these drip box filters for this aquarium setup. I'm using two Sun Sun submersible pumps, one for each side. They are rated at 40 watts and have a flow rate of 2,500 liters per hour. Do note that this number greatly reduces the higher you pump the water to. I'm using a thickened PVC tube to deliver the water from the pump to the top of the filter. The pump outlet and PVC tubes are of the same diameter, so I'm using a short length of hose to connect the two. Here I'm measuring the length of the tube required and sawing the tube to the correct length. Turning on the pump for the first time, this is how the drip box filter looks without any media inside. The water is pumped from the tank up to the spray bar. The first two clear containers with shelves are drip through. The first darkened container is drip through as well, with an overflow to the right. The next two darkened containers are sump like. These two different types of environments will cultivate different types of beneficial bacteria. I will discuss this in more details in the next video. Here I'm installing the Sunsun JVP402 wave pump. It's rated at 48 watts and have a flow rate of 24,000 liters per hour. Here I'm installing a third submersible pump. Same like the other two, it's rated at 40 watts. This pump is specifically for water change, so that I can pump out the water quicker than using a siphon hose. Alright, we've come to the end of this video. Thanks again for watching. The next video is aquarium hobbyist's favourite topic. Filtration Filtration And filtration Alright, see you in the next video.